So drawing screen tablets at this point are not by any means a new technology, kind of like automobiles aren't exactly new. So like a car, the novelty has worn off a bit, and unless you're a young person getting your first, most are left hoping simply for something reliable. Well, when I last went into the ice Captain America style in about 2014, the answer to that question was to get a Wacom, or a Wacom. A Cintiq. Everything else was sort of a cheap knockoff. Now fast forward a bit to today and... Things are almost completely reversed. First off, why did I go into the ice? Well, my main drawing device, both software and hardware, has been the iPad Pro and Procreate for drawing and illustration. Not only is the pencil and screen perfect with no parallax, it's also portable. But in the iPad versus screen tablet debate, the concession does have to be made for industry standard animation and 3D programs. It's almost more silly to have a rivalry between the two than something like PlayStation and Xbox because they each do different things. It's like my car is more powerful than your forklift. Okay? So leaving the iPad, which is still my favorite child, out of the equation, I need to do desktop things, specifically work on the Stormfellers animated series, which is mainly done through Blender. So is Wacom still the industry standard for screen tablets? Now that is the right, is the right question. question. In about 2009, I distinctly remember taking the train into the city to B&H, buying a 21-inch Cintiq, and carrying the massive box back home on the train. Man, I had a lot more energy then. I paid the $21,000, sorry, the $2,100 that I had saved up over several months for it. It was chunky, it got really, really hot, the colors were wildly off from your main monitor, but it was the best you could do. So it's been 12 years, so surely they must have progressed in technology and brought the price down significantly, right? Well, Wacom's changed the way that they name things, so the closest thing to that 21 UX in 2009 now is the Cintiq Pro 24, and it's the same price that I paid 12 years ago. Okay, well, it's 4K resolution, they offer cheaper screen tablets for a lower price, and there's a comically large Cintiq Pro 32 for 3300. It seems like, for the more entry-level products, there's the Wacom One, which I'll talk about in a moment, or the Cintiq 16 and 22, all of which are using HD resolution, which is what televisions from 10 years ago had, and you sat six feet away from those, not with your face up close to it. Wacom is still the industry standard, but I'm having a harder and harder time understanding why. There have always been a litany of driver incompatibility problems and bugs that people experience with any screen tablets, but in the last few years, I've started to see people get angrier and angrier. And I could end the sentence right there and it'd be true. But I'm seeing people get angrier and angrier with Wacom Cintiqs. One of the weakest points being their customer service. A product will break under warranty or get a series of dead pixels and they just won't care. Or servicing it means sending the device, which you use for work every day, in to be serviced by them for weeks on end without a replacement in the meantime, which is a death blow to most professional schedules. Now, this video is not intended to be a hit piece on Wacom. In fact, if they were interested in me trying out one of the newer Pro Cintiqs side by side with the product later in this video, I'd be happy to oblige. I tend to not have any brand loyalty when it comes to these things. I just go with what makes more sense. I'm also someone who more often than not will save up and spend more for the premier thing instead of saving a few bucks now and paying for it later, so to speak. And for the longest time, I thought the premier thing was Wacom. But something interesting happens when you make art videos on YouTube. Everyone wants to send you their tablet. Well, that, that's not totally fair. Some people want you to buy their tablet and then they'll reimburse you after you make a review video about it. How is, how is that a good deal? Some of these are small companies making knockoff Cintiq and Intuos tablets for the lowest possible cost. And that's where I do understand needing to buy on a budget, but I feel like it will end up hurting you later if you can help it. If you're a professional, it almost feels like a liability to buy something untested for your job. So now two companies who have emerged to contradict the cheap knockoff impression I've gotten are Huion and XP Pen. They've really started to develop a pedigree for themselves of quality as they make really solid entries into the screen tablet market. 
Today, I want to look at the XP Pen Artist 22 second gen, which was provided by XP Pen. This isn't even the latest top of the line tablet from XP Pen, but I'm kind of trying to prove a point with that. Not only are we sometimes caught up in the need for the latest and greatest as a distraction from our either improving or doing our work, but here's the thing. The tech that you need to be a successful artist with screen tablets has existed since before 2009. They'll keep adding resolution and levels of pressure sensitivity, but it's kind of like how a lot of digital painters had all the tools that they needed back in Photoshop CS6 and all of the stuff that they've added since have been these algorithmic photography aids. Man, speaking of bloated art staples that have been toppled by their younger competition, Photoshop. But again, it's like cars. Newer cars have cool optional technology, but the basic car has existed forever. No, not, not literally forever. And it's kind of like if Mercedes-Benz had been the standard forever, but people start saying, hey everyone, we don't all have to drive Mercedes anymore. They make affordable cars now. Because here's the best part of the solid, reliable entries from companies like XP Pen. These things are significantly, in all caps, cheaper. By the way, not to add to the hit piece feeling, but I got and tried a Wacom One and it was fine. Obviously it's entry level, but this level of screen parallax is deep. That's the distance between where your pen hits the surface and how much further in your cursor is from there. And the resolution is that same HD from the old Cintiq. I'm sure it's serviceable for an art app, but the screen size for a 3D app like Blender with a ton of interface kind of hurts my eyes to look at after a while. This is my first experience with XP Pen and setup was really quite easy. There's an adjustable stand that it comes with, a half glove, which is really nice, a case and stand and extra tips for the pen, all very nice touches. Like any screen tablet, there's driver and software setup to make it compatible. And I did something quite silly during my setup. I thought that it was creating an extra display on my iMac that I couldn't see, which obviously wasn't ideal. Then I realized I'm used to the Wacom devices, which as recently as the Wacom One and current Cintiqs required a display output port and a USB port for the pen input, so two plugs. For the Artist 22, I had plugged the HDMI cable and the USB-C port in, following suit to what I was used to, except that it only needs the USB-C. So only needing one cable to your computer is a really big plus to the XP Pen. Once you have it calibrated, the screen is fine. It's great, and honestly, that's the best compliment that I can give it. This is a solid tool that inserts perfectly into my workflow. You can pick your kids up from soccer practice with it, and you can run to Home Depot. That's a car illustration, not a literal description of this product. As I'm writing this, and this is not me plugging their sale, which might actually be over, this is sort of just an observation about the price, XP Pen has a sale where this screen tablet is the same price as the Wacom One. They're both $400, and at full price, without the sale, it's usually like $500. So comparing those two, it's a huge difference. What is important is that this is a nice improvement over my previous screen tablet from 10 years ago that costs a quarter of the price of what that product's successor is. So I'm not a tech reviewer traditionally, and I'm not super interested in getting into the technical specification minutia. There are some better specs on some Wacom products, but they aren't alone anymore. You don't have to buy a Mercedes just to have a family vehicle. And if there was a growing amount of factory recalls and uncaring customer service at Mercedes, the luster would start to wear at that premium brand too. This is a pragmatic, good solution for the majority of artists, and I'm really happy that they exist. I would love to try the most recent Wacom and Julian products to give a, a more definitive comparison, but I can say with confidence that the thing that you need this to do it does. So screen tablets are actually kind of in an exciting place now that there's a disruption and competition in the marketplace, and especially when something as ideal as the iPad and Procreate exists for illustration anywhere. Sorry, I had to show a little bit of love to my beautiful Bugatti motorbike child. The needs that you have can be met by more than one company, and that only serves to make more things accessible for newer artists and helps professionals not have to choose between something like a new computer or really nice vacation or replacing their screen tablet anymore. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments what your experience has been either with drawing tablets or screen tablets, what you're hoping to have or what things you'd like to see improved in the future. And of course I do kind of want to restate this, I'm naive not to on the internet, but we like to keep things pretty positive around here. This is consumer electronics that we're talking about today. It's certainly not the end of the world. There's far more important things out there. So keep things civil. I don't want to see like a PlayStation versus Xbox 
turf war and the comments. It's just, it's, it's screen tablets, okay? It's drawing, it's art, it's fun, and we like it, and it's important to us, but there's more important things. XP Pen provided a link in the description below if you're interested in their product. You can follow me at Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok, and of course, we make videos every week here on Character Design Forge Sundays, Sunday evenings, Eastern Time. That's when you can expect a new video. My course Learn Character Design is a comprehensive character design curriculum. It's over 18 hours of video learning. We cover drawing, story, design, all the things that I know as a character designer to get you to a place where you can make characters that people care about as well. This month's Biko's Backpack looks like this. You can get it over on patreon.com slash bagel denizen. It's a personal package that arrives in your mailbox containing a hard enamel pin and a foil trading card. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.